again, everyone. I'm Tom Dorado. Welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. 13th ranked Oklahoma State is tied for the Big 12 lead as we make our way through the second half of the conference season. And what a tough road it will be from here on out. The Cowboys put two more W's on the board since our last visit and look strong in doing so. We'll have all the highlights from the A&M payback and the unbelievable big Monday whipping of number 15, Kansas. You'll probably want to get your VCRs warmed up because Wade Pearson has an exciting look at the KU win on this week's Off the Court feature. As usual, we have a full plate, so you stay with us. We're back after this opening. Time out. The Eddie Sutton. Welcome back to the show. Eddie, we've often wondered aloud and privately what this team would be like if they put two good halves together. We've got a couple of games back-to-back -back working now. The best we've played all season as far as a back-to-back -back, uh, situation we defeated A&M uh, by a score of 87 to 55. Then came back against a very good Kansas team and beat them 86 to 53. Solid defense. Both teams shot 33 percent. A&M and Kansas. We shot over 50 percent. Good balance scoring. Great intensity uh, for 40 minutes. And that's something that we haven't seen. We played in spurts a lot of times this year. But I hope that's a good omen because from now on the schedule is brutal. Cowboys working on a five-game win streak. I know you've been asked this several times by members of the media. What's kind of turned the club on? What's, what's been the spark? Well, I think the, the fact that uh, we've worked very hard and we keep pressing the, the players, and especially the seniors, to understand that this is the last go-around for them. If uh, we are going to be a contender for the, the league championship and you have six teams that are really in contention to win the Big 12, then we need to turn it on and, and play every game like uh, uh, it's the NCAA tournament and you lose, you're out. That's basically been the M.O., so to speak, for the Cowboys during this streak. Of course, it all began with A&M coming back uh, this past week, coming back to Gallagher Ibe Arena. A little payback in mind, and it was a nice afternoon for a lot of people, including Glendon Alexander. Well, we were so pleased to see Glennon have that type of game. You know, I'd been telling him, I said, you know, one of these nights you're going to hit somebody for 25 points, and sure enough, it came against the Aggie, just uh, an unbelievable shooting performance. Eight out of nine from the field, six out of seven from beyond the arc, three out of four free throws. But uh, this was uh, really uh, just a team effort. Uh, we had four guys in double figures besides uh, Glennon. You had uh, Joe Atkins, who really played well in both mm -hmm. games this week. Uh, he had 28 points, I think, and, and uh, 11 assists. Uh, 13 rebounds, and that's really outstanding stats for a guard. Well, there was a lot of emotion in this one, obviously, after what happened down at College Station, but everybody seemed to keep it in perspective, and the Cowboys simply put together one of their finest efforts of the year. Well, Brian Montanani played well. You saw Desmond hitting the shot there. He had 23 points in this game and topped it off against the Jayhawks with 31. So uh, I think everyone contributed in both these ball games, and uh, great backdoor, nice pass and Joe laid it up. As you look, and you're gonna see it here again, uh, Cowboy's gonna be able to get a little bit of a block action right here. I was gonna talk about Andre Williams. He kinda of came in and showed, in these two games really, what you expect he will be like in years to come. Well, he has a chance to be a very good basketball player as he uh, develops in the, the different areas uh, of the game. But right now, probably his strength is his ability to block shots mm -hmm. and uh, he, he, uh, we got a glimpse of him blocking one against uh, Texas A&M. You're working with him, you and the assistant coaches, working with Andre where he faces up and can shoot that 10, 12, 14 footer. It seems to me in the last couple of practices, his passing skills have gotten a little bit better. Catch, pass. Well, one of the things, he needs to have a little bit better balance when he passes the ball, also when he shoots the basketball. He has a tendency to play too upright instead of getting down in what we call an athletic position. Mm -hmm. But uh, Jimmy Williams has really been working with him along with Kyle Keller and, and uh, Sean, and I think that he, uh, he is getting better. And so is Jason Keith. Both those guys, if we are to do well uh, the remainder of the season, I think both those guys have got to step up and help us. Brian's been in somewhat of a funk, I guess, the last couple of games. Not necessarily, if you looked at the stat sheet, you say he wouldn't, there's, and there's Andre with a flush down there. But he's, he's getting the same kind of shots he got with the first 10, 12 games. He's just not hitting them at a higher percentage. Well, he still had two pretty good games. He had, you know, 18 rebounds and 19 mm -hmm. points uh, in, in the two games uh, combined. So, But he isn't shooting the ball from 15, 17 feet as well. And, and in the upcoming game with Oklahoma, 
uh, he needs to be able to do that because we've got to get some points out of out of Brian. You saw several people here as, as the Cowboys win this one and, and really uh, kind of set the tone for the weekend. Uh, your teams have always been able to settle into roles about this time of the year. And I'm talking about whether you start, whether you don't, whether you play 10 minutes, you come off the bench, what you have to do. Do you feel that starting to mold together now? Well, I think so. You know, uh, people often hear the term, uh, he's a role player. Mm -hmm. Well, that's up to the coaching staff to define roles for each player and then hope that uh, they buy into it and they understand this is the best way that the team has to win if you will carry out the role that we've described for you. And I think our players have bought into it and I think they better understand what they can do individually that will allow us to really be a good basketball team. Well, the next outing, 48 hours later, I mean, it was shades of the way things used to be here at Oklahoma State. Crowds waiting to get into the arena, just deafening noise. They were ready for this one. The Cowboys were too. Well, I was surprised when we went over for the shoot around and you're right, it used to be this way in those early years when, uh, in the early 90s, when we really had those outstanding ball clubs, that the students would come over and stand in line to get a good seat. And, when we uh, came over that late that afternoon on Monday, uh, sure enough, that line was cleared out to the football uh, parking lot. What an effort by everyone concerned, uh, led by Desmond Mason. Again, you mentioned the 31 points, 10 of 14. This is something that uh, will never happen again, in my opinion. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, this is the third worst beating Kansas has ever absorbed. Uh, the worst an OSU team had ever beaten the Jayhawks was 21. Uh, uh, you know, everything fell in place. We played over our heads. Kansas didn't play quite as well. There's no way you beat a Roy Williams ball club like we did, but it was just an unbelievable effort, especially at the defensive end. You know, our, our defense was so good uh, in both halves, and uh, I think the young players that Kansas have, and they're really talented. Uh, and I think by the end of the year, Kansas will really be a good battle. They're good right now, but I think as those young players develop, they're really going to be good, and, and that Big 12 tournament is going to be oh, something. It'll be tough on the old coaches, but great for the fans, and then you see one of his many, many big plays. Well, you know, we often are hesitant about uh, talking about individual performances, mm -hmm. but what Desmond did in this game is one of the great performances that uh, we've had a, a player here at OSU perform since I came back. Uh, I think back in 95 when country had that great game against Kansas 33 points and 20 rebounds but this certainly was just as good and there you see not only did he score 31 points but he blocked shots and uh, did did an unbelievable job on Gregory who's one of their best players I don't think Gregory scored till late in the second half that's pretty tough duty right there trying to shoot over Andre and also Desmond coming from the offside nice entry pass and Frederick uh, takes it up strong and I like that enthusiasm, I like that smile. <laughs> you like those bald heads? Yeah, well, I don't know about that. That was really kind of a strange situation. Uh, our guys decided they would shave their heads, and lo and behold, Kansas did the same thing. So uh, some of those guys need to go to a tanning parlor, though, and get a little <laughs> more color on the top of their head, I think. You know, again, always reluctant to talk about an individual player, uh, but I had uh, talked with Desmond prior to the game for the radio uh, broadcast, and we discussed kind of emulating a little bit uh, what Pete did for us last year about this time where Pete actually kind of picked us up on his shoulders, took us into postseason, and Desmond made no bones about it. He feels like this is his role the rest of the way. There's a great uh, dunk on a, a good defensive play and a lead pass to, to Brian, but I agree with that. Uh, Pete was able to do that for us, and Desmond, I think, uh, all of a sudden feels the, the need to, to do this. We have a couple of other players in this league, I think, that are doing the same thing. When you look at Pfizer at mm -hmm. Iowa State and mm -hmm. you look at Naha Raw down at the University of Oklahoma and maybe Mim uh, to a certain degree at Texas. So if you've got a star player like Desmond, uh, he needs to step up and, and make sure that his teammates understand he's given everything that he has. And if he does that, then they're going to step in line and do the same thing. One thing I'm sure as a coaching staff you were proud of in this game, one of the many things, you saw the halftime score but the intensity, especially in the first five or six minutes of the second half, was just about on the par it was in the first session. Well, that was one thing that uh, we've had problems with this year sometimes, coming out of the dressing room a little flat, and we challenged the ball club and told them, I said, you know, you may be up 45 to 29, 
but against the Kansas team, that's not enough, and you got to go out and play this second half just like you're starting all, all over and the score is 0-0. Zero, zero. And that was a big shot early in the second half. Joe Atkins now with three uh, double-digit scoring. Look at that, we're going to get four out of this one, but Joe seems to be back on the, on the track, I would think. Joe played in these two games like I thought he'd be playing all season long. I mentioned earlier he rebounded well. He had uh, at times when Golly wasn't in the game. Uh, he was able to uh, lead the ball club as far as the point guard. Nice drive by Doug, and Doug in this ball game uh, had, uh, I think, 12 points, mm -hmm. six out of 10 free throws, and I was really excited to see our students and our fans get behind <laughs> him when he was shooting free throws. But going back to Joe, he scored, he rebounded, he played defense, and uh, just played like he needs to play. Great backdoor cut by Desmond and a nice pass. He opened the floor up a little bit and also ran some time and got to the free throw line all at once. Well, that's one thing that we haven't been able to do is, uh, like we would like to this year is get to the free throw line. But in this particular game, we did. We got there 33 times, hit 23 of them. You're going to see uh, Atkins just leading the broken floor. And look at that. Jason Keith Jason with the Keith. flush, huh? Look at him. <laughs> is he excited? He brings some energy to the floor. He likes to play. In the, Again, his mother and dad have been here for two games, and they picked the two best ones, University of Texas, when we defeated the Longhorns, and, and then, of course, the, the Kansas game. I know you had to be very proud of this club in that game, no question, the way they came back and really stood tall, toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kansas, had the crowd, no question, that helps you, but did not fold. Kansas made a couple of runs, mile runs, threatened to get back in the game, but we never let them off the deck. Kansas has a tendency to really have big runs on people, and we were able to, uh, you know, keep them from ever having any kind of a, a large run. And, you know, the one thing, I, I, when we play Kansas, those are always classic mm -hmm. games. Even, I mean, this game was a one-sided game, but so many of them have been close most of the time. Last year we got beaten overtime in, in uh, Allen Fieldhouse and Lawrence. But the one thing, both programs have great respect for the other. There's never any trash talking on the floor between the two ball clubs, and that's the way college basketball ought to be. Well, if you were not a Gallagher Ivorita, you missed a classic. We told you. Get those VCRs ready. We're going to give you another look at it when we return to the Eddie Sutton Show. It's always tough to come up with that top 10 list of anything, although that never seemed to be a problem for one popular late night show host. But was Oklahoma State's 33 point win over Kansas worthy of a top five or 10 label when you look back on all the big wins the Cowboys have posted under Eddie Sutton? Well, we'll discuss that again in a few minutes, but for now, sit back and enjoy a very special night in Cowboy basketball history. this year in quite some time. For all intents and purposes, they took advantage of every opportunity that they had tonight. They played with them on the board. They played tremendous defense. They kept all their inside people in tow, and the Cowboys were able to drive the shoulders of Desmond Mason and just keep scoring every time that Kansas tried to make a move. What a way to start the second half of the season. was big uh, winning by 33 points is kind of remarkable we didn't expect them to win by by that big a margin but you know we were confident coming in the game that we had a chance to win if we played well this is what college basketball is all about and this is why I came up from the state playing games like this and having a crowd behind you like this 
It was big time for us and everybody contributed and it was a great win. That big run set the tone for the game, and um, they never could recover. And every time they made a few buckets, our guys would come back and we'd go on another run just to kind of hold them off. And, you know, we just played terrific tonight. Uh. another great piece but that was a great evening and uh, it certainly has to be one of the best performances by uh, a team since I came back to Oklahoma State. I, I thought that uh, the way they played in all areas of the game was just sensational and the crowd was magnificent. I mean I thought the roof was going to go off there at one time and there was so much noise you couldn't even talk in timeouts. Given everything, the situation, the Cowboys, Kansas, Everything that surrounded the ball game has to be a top tenner, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it would be in the top ten, probably a top five since uh, in the last ten years. Well, we still have a lot to cover. As you well know, we've got the question of the week, the notebook. You stay with us. We're back after this short timeout. stop and go of rush hour traffic. Check one out at your Jeep dealer. Possessing a will to win and the determination to be the best, Oklahoma State University student athletes push themselves to the limit. Countless hours of training and preparation are spent in the pursuit of excellence on the playing field and in the classroom. Success stories like these are made possible by your support of the OSU Posse, providing opportunities for scholastic and sports excellence. This week's question from oakstate.com is brought to you by Southwestern Bell. If you have a question for Coach Eddie Sutton, log on to OSU's official athletic website at www.oakstate.com to participate in the Southwestern Bell Ask Coach Sutton contest. Great question. Uh, Matt Ketchum is a former Pistol Pete here at Oklahoma State. Got his degree, works for a construction company up in, in uh, Anchorage. Uh, we are going back to the Great Alaskan Shootout, I think 2002, and uh, I've taken four different teams up there. Always a marvelous experience. And you were able to get out the last and lead time a dog I, sled. That's right, the last time I was leading a dog sled. And we're going to have Wade bring some bigger gloves next time so he won't uh, get frostbite. From Alaska to the Reporter's Notebook, we have a couple of items we need for you to take a look at. And uh, our first item is going to have to do with playing on the road, never easy. When Iowa State won earlier this week at Missouri, that was the first time one of the top six teams had won on the home court of a top six team. Well, it's always tough to go on the road, especially in a league like this, but our road schedule is extremely mm. difficult because we're playing for the contenders, uh, Oklahoma, uh, Texas, Missouri, and Iowa State. So we'll see how good a ball club we are. For the next five, as you mentioned, they're out on the road. And incidentally, the latest number, 37 and 18 overall home teams versus visitors coming in, trying to upset them. So it's been very difficult this year as well. Next item, a tough job. How would you, well, you probably will be, as far as the coaches are concerned, picking an all Big 12 team. Well, I think uh, four guys is very easy. You pick up, you pick Desmond Mason, you pick Nahara, you pick uh, Mim, mm -hmm. and you pick Pfizer. Now, that fifth one, there are a lot of really strong candidates, but I, I, you know, I'm not going to pick one right <laughs> now. But those other four guys, they're all legit. Okay, 132 and counting. That's our next item, and that has to do with the Cowboys' number of three point shots and, of course, the coaches versus cancer. Well, this is one thing. I know a lot of people have really uh, stepped forward to help out with the uh, coaches versus cancer by pledging uh, anything from $0.10 cents to $10. 
and uh, all of the money goes to the American Cancer Society. Every time we hit a tray, whatever you pledge, that's what you have to give uh, at the end of the year. So I hope anyone that is watching that hasn't done this, I hope they'll step forward and, and help us out. Well, it's Bedlam on Saturday, 3 o'clock at the Lloyd Noble Center, and even if the Bedlam was not involved, as we look at the standings, you can see how big a ball game this is, two teams just neck and neck. Well, you look at all those teams, all six of those teams, in my opinion, will be in the big dance uh, come March. All of them have a chance right now to, to win the Big 12 Conference, but uh, still seven games to go, and we've got to play one at a time. But down there in Norman, it's always a special game. Bedlam is. I think this is the best Oklahoma team we've seen. I think they're playing as well as anyone in the conference right now. They have a great All-American candidate in Nahara. I think the uh, improved play of Stone and Avila has given them better inside play, and they have marvelous perimeter players, great outside shooting. Missouri and Oklahoma, we have the best perimeter shooters in the league. It'll be a terrific game, and uh, it'll be a hot environment down there. Well, we look forward to that. We'll see you down there. We'll see all of you down there as well. Tip-off time Saturday at the Lloyd Noble Center, 3 o'clock for Eddie Sutton. Our entire crew here at Educational Television Services, Tom Dorado. Goodbye, everybody.